This morning, the World Health Organization announced that because of concerns that the word monkeypox is racist and stigmatizing, the disease will officially be renamed M-pox. <laughs> and I don't know who this is for. <laughs> you know, this sounds like they were trying so hard not to be racist that they ended up being racist. <laughs> you know, some guy was like, we can't use monkey. That immediately makes me think of, you know, <laughs> right? Come on, we're all thinking it, right? Am I the only one? <laughs> Cuz here's the thing, if you're really trying to get rid of the stigma, just give it a completely different name, right? Cuz you realize you're just abbreviating the word that you don't want people to think about, which works until someone says, "What does the M stand for?" <laughs> ah. <laughs> In international news, a French court has officially ruled that companies cannot require employees to have fun at work after one man was fired for refusing to participate in office parties. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you now, I'm with this guy. Yeah, if you ask me, companies require way too much of their employees. Oh, you're making them go to office parties, team buildings, you're forcing them to wash their hands after going to the bathroom. It's too much! <laughs> you gotta pick one! Oh, in some news out of the Pentagon, the U.S. Defense Department just failed a government audit with officials saying that they are unable to account for more than 60% of the military's $3.5 trillion in assets. Oh. Yeah, they just don't know where it is. I don't, I don't even know how it's possible to lose track of that much money. Like, what, are they waterboarding people with crystal? What are they doing there, huh? <laughs> and honestly, the Pentagon deserves to be punished for this. Unfortunately, they happen to have all the missiles, so we'll let it slide this time, Pentagon. <laughs> Ooh, but next time. All right, let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day, starting with China, America's loan shark. <laughs> Ever since the coronavirus originated in one of China's major cities, Xi Jinping's government has been doing everything it can to clamp down on COVID-19. But after three years of some of the strictest lockdowns in the world, it looks like the Chinese people have officially had enough. Protests are spreading across that country. Thousands are taking to the streets, some even calling for China's president to step down. All of this amid rising frustration over the government's zero COVID strategy. Crowds swelled in defiance, <laughs> spilling over to the heart of Beijing. We want to be free! We want to be free! Chanting for freedom from the grip of a COVID policy that protesters say has worn on too long. They're calling for the end of lockdowns, the end of testing, all of the zero COVID measures that have ruled daily life here. Yeah, that's right. People in China are taking to the streets to protest the government's draconian COVID policies, which is a big deal. Because remember, China's not one of those chill countries. We can just, like, talk trash about the government or storm the capital or plot to kidnap a governor. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Protesting in China is, is a big deal. It's like growing up in an African family and trying to tell your parents that you don't think Noah's Ark is real, you know? <laughs> He's like, I'm just saying, Mom, think about it. How can they fit all those animals on one boat? He'd be like, the same way I'm going to fit all this foot on your backside, huh? <laughs> Are you saying the Bible is not real? Are you saying the Bible? Oh, Jesus, help this child now, huh? <laughs> now, there are many reasons why China has been so hardcore with its lockdowns, right? Less than half of their elderly population is vaccinated. The Chinese vaccine isn't particularly effective. And the communist government has refused to bring in outside vaccines well, obviously, because they think it'll make them look bad. You know, it's the same reason I was reluctant to bring a dildo into my relationship. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't mind that you use it, but the fact that you cuddle with it afterwards, that's what hurts me, Candace! That's what hurts me! <laughs> and, and almost three years into this pandemic, it is still crazy to see the range of responses from different countries around the world, right? China shuts down an entire city if one person coughs. Meanwhile, Americans are like, hey, guys, I tested positive for COVID, so I'm just gonna play the first few rounds of Spin the Bottle tonight, okay? <laughs> Let's be responsible. Uh... <laughs> but let's move on from a dictatorship to someone who wishes they could start their own. Donald, you're making me crazy Trump. <laughs> Ever since Donald Trump announced that he would be running for election in 2024, many have been wondering, will this finally be the moment when he becomes presidential? 
Well, judging by his recent dinner party with Kanye West, the computer says no. Former President Donald Trump is facing fierce criticism tonight, even from his own allies, for having dinner at his Mar-a-Lago estate with controversial musician Kanye West and white supremacist Nick Fuentes. If you're not familiar, Fuentes is this high-profile figure on the far right, a Holocaust denier, but he's best known for running the America First organization, which, according to the ADL, quote, seeks to forge a white nationalist alternative to the mainstream GOP. Even for Donald Trump, this was outrageous. Okay, first of all, first of all, this whole story sounds like the setup to one of those jokes that your uncle tells you at dinner, you know? Like, okay, so a racist billionaire, an anti-Semitic rapper, and a white supremacist walk into a bar. <laughs> and then what happens... Hold on, the black waiter's coming. Hold, a Diet Coke, please. Thank you. Thank you. Secondly, why do journalists still act surprised when Donald Trump does Donald Trump stuff? Huh? Even for Donald Trump, this is... What do you mean, even for Donald Trump? Is Donald Trump doing Donald Trump? Trump having dinner with Nazis is not outrageous. If he had dinner with vegetables, that would be outrageous. That would be crazy. <laughs> what? Yeah, and he was spelling words. What? <laughs> But because of this dinner, Trump has taken a lot of flack from all sides. And so, in classic Trump style, he sends out a few posts about why, as per usual, he isn't to blame for anything that he did. But Mr. Trump tried distancing himself, posting on social media that West called me to have dinner, expressed no anti-Semitism, and claimed, I didn't know Nick Fuentes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in, in Trump's defense, I mean, how would he know that the guy Kanye rolls with could be a white supremacist? I mean, I get what he's saying. He's like, I just wanted to have dinner with this anti-Semite. I didn't know he was gonna bring a friend. <laughs> because I love how Trump tries to immunize himself by saying, Kanye expressed no anti-Semitism at the dinner. A and then what? I'm also sure he didn't rap at the dinner, but you still know that he's a rapper. <laughs> now, you might be wondering, if Kanye didn't want to talk anti-Semitism at the dinner table, what did he want to talk about? Well, apparently, he was trying to convince Trump to not run for president, but not in the way you think. The dinner was not completely amiable. Trump became angry when West asked the 2024 presidential candidate to serve as running mate for West's own newly announced presidential bid. Ye posting this video to Twitter titled Mar-a-Lago Debrief explaining he asked if Trump would be his vice presidential running mate at the dinner. I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, but then he goes on to say that Kim is a You could tell her I said that. And I was thinking, like, that's the mother of my children. Trump started basically screaming at me at the table, telling me I was going to lose. I mean, has that ever worked for anyone in history? <laughs> You're going to lose. Tell him he's going to lose. lose. Tell me. I'm like, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> Trump. You're talking to Ye. <laughs> okay, first of all, Kanye, whoever made his video, they bleeped him when he said the thing that Trump said. And I'm going, you have people that bleep you, why don't you use them more? <laughs> you just be like, here's what I think about the boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and also, the fact that Trump got so mad at Kanye just shows you, like, where his priorities are, right? He has no problem hosting a guy who wants to go Death Con 3 on the Jews or the Holocaust denier that he brought to dinner with him, who he got along with. But if you ever suggest he should be number two on someone's ticket, Trump will be like, you disgust me, sir. <laughs> talk like that has no place in America. We don't talk like that in this country. <laughs> and I get where Trump is coming from. Kanye is asking Trump to be his Mike Pence. And Trump is probably like, ew, I could never be Mike Pence. I have sex with my eyes open. <laughs> All right, that's it for the headlines. But before we go to a quick break, let's check in on the stock market with our finance expert, Michael Costa, everybody! <laughs> Michael, good to see you, man. Yeah, good to see you. What on earth is happening in the market today, man? I'm crushing it, Trevor. <laughs> I am crushing it, and I got a hot tip for you. I got a hot tip for you, so pay attention, okay? Now, today, the Dow was down big, all right? But 
I don't care, all right? Because today is Cyber Monday, right? <laughs> Not to be confused with Black Friday or Small Business Saturday or Giving Tuesday. It's not Thirsty Thursdays or Taco Tuesdays or Sunday Bloody Sunday. It's Cyber Monday, the day George Washington declared 30% off of all plasma screen TV. All right, so the way I'm crushing it today, Trevor, is by spending. All right? Experts like me know you got to spend money to make money, which is why today I am making boatloads of money. All right? Now, let me show you what I'm buying, okay? First thing in my cart, a Stocks for Dummies book, okay? <laughs> Look, I don't know shit about stocks, all right? Yeah, I crush it, and I make tons of money, but I don't understand any of it. So as soon as I learn to read, this book is going to be super helpful. Now. Speaking of helpful, the next thing in my cart, seven breast pumps. Now look, little known fact, they can pump anything, okay? You got a flooded basement? You need to put air in your bicycle tires? Muscle definition, okay? How do you think I got these fat baby twins, all right? By borrowing my sister's breast pump, all right? And now I'm gonna have seven of my own. Next item in my cart? A picture frame. Look, I don't need a picture frame, but this is a family that I want to be a part of. Look at that. <laughs> Innocent, pure, together. I bet this family doesn't think my mashed potatoes are too salty. You ever think about that? My family? Ugly. Okay, next one. <laughs> I always wanted to get a guitar, so I put a guitar in my cart. And I was going to get a real guitar, but I got this Fisher Price one, cheap, no strings attached. Also, <laughs> no strings attached. So, very easy to learn to play. Now, somber note, on my next item in my cart, it's an adult casket, okay? Now look, I'm not planning on dying anytime soon, but I ate a bag ed bad egg sandwich on a WestJet flight coming back from my ugly family's Thanksgiving, and I was <laughs> contemplating my own death. And during that time, I thought, holy shit, I haven't planned for my funeral, so I got a good deal. Also, caskets, great place for storage while you're still alive. Paper towels, <laughs> kids' toys. <laughs> New Yorkers, you get it. Smaller caskets, plus bonus, when my wife says go sleep on the couch, I say, okay, no problem, but secretly I sleep in the casket. <laughs> Joke's on her. And with the extra storage space, I got plenty of room for my last item, seven more breast pumps, just in case my first seven break. That's why I'm the expert. All right, I promised you a hot tip, remember? All right, hot tip. Stop watching this right now and start online shopping. You can't buy any of this any other day. Back to you, Trevor. Let's go. Michael Cox, everybody.